Hi guys, this is Lauren with Lauren Watkins Art and today I have another fun speed painting for you and this one is going to be holiday themed as we are getting closer to the holiday season. I started this painting off wanting it to be a very realistic um, piece. I did a similar painting to this one last year that was very realistic and had tons and tons of details and that was my intent when I started this. But as I progressed, the more I found I wanted to become more impressionistic. So you'll see it get more and more detailed and then loosen up as I go along. So to get started on this picture, I sketched out uh, the image from my reference photo and then I transferred it onto my sanded paper using graphite transfer paper. I just found that graphite transfer paper, the the lines that get transferred on don't smudge as freely as if I just sketched it on using just a normal mechanical or graphite pencil. So I prefer to transfer my images, images onto the sanded paper just to prevent smudging and smearing. Once I sketched out the picture, I then did an ink underpainting and for the underpainting, I am using Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India inks and to thin out the color and make it less pigmented, I diluted it with, with uh, rubbing alcohol. But be warned when you add rubbing alcohol to it, it makes it bloom and spread a lot more than if you were using the ink just straight from the bottle. So that's something you have to kind of keep in mind when you are applying the paint. But I'm just laying this paint down, um, blocking in the general shapes of color and the general like big shadowed areas. Um, and these will act as kind of markers as I'm working so I don't lose my place as I go along. When you start painting uh, more complicated pieces that have lots of like intricate parts, so like on this piece you have all the different boughs of the tree and you have all the lights hitting it and you have all the ornaments it's and everything's kind of like organic shapes it's really easy to kind of lose your spot in the painting and so I found that these underpaintings especially marking in the dark shadows and protecting the highlights really allows me to kind of keep track of where everything is located on the picture so I don't get confused as I work later on. And then after the ink was done, I came in with pan pastels. Now pan pastels are a very soft, finely milled um, pastel that is so soft it can't be in like a stick form. So it comes in these pans and then you apply it to your paper using like sponges. And so I'm using the sponges that pan pastel creates called soft tools. And I really love these when working with pastels um, but that is how I'm applying it to the paper there's they come in a wide range of different types of tools they have available um, but my favorite are these ones that look almost like a palette knife with a sponge stuck to the end and you can switch out the sponges as you work but they blend very softly and they're so thin and fine they don't fill up the tooth of the paper and so they're fantastic for these under layers because you can, you can start blending out, you can start building up the layers of color without worrying of filling out the tooth of the paper too quickly. Now, if you don't have pan pastels, don't stress, okay? You can achieve the same look just using the pastels you have. What I would recommend doing is doing a very light layer um, using your pastels. Um, if you have harder pastels, use those first. But if you don't, just use a very light hand and just go over and start blocking in the color and then blending it out. Um, you can use a sponge to blend it out. You can use your finger. Just try to get those pigments kind of in the tooth of the paper and just get those light layers built up. Once I got the initial pan pastel layer done, then I started coming in with my polychromo colored pencils. Um, these are an oil-based colored pencil, 
And so they, I really like the way they blend and they work really well with pastels. Even though they're not technically a pastel, they work really well with them. And I haven't had as good of experience with more traditional pencils working as well as these. By the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these brands. These are just things that I've learned through other artists and through experimenting. So this is just kind of what I like doing, but you can experiment and find what works for yourself. These are just to give you ideas on how to approach a project. Um, but I like the polychromos for these early layers, again, because they don't fill up the tooth of the paper and they come in a wide variety of colors. And I find that's really helpful because sometimes I pastel pencils um, sets don't come in a huge spectrum of colors, especially like darks and browns um, and some of the neutrals. And so I really like using this for those early layers to help build that up. Um, and you can see they're blending out really nicely just using the soft tools. Um, the polychromos aren't as opaque as traditional colored pencils or pastel pencils. Um, that's why I kind of use them at this layer, but they're just a great step in the process of building up your painting. Now, when I work with pastels, I tend to follow the same principle that you use in oil paintings. So in oil pa paintings, there's a principle called fat over lean. That's where you use your thinnest layers of paint at the beginning of the painting and then you build up thicker layers as you go along and you're just gradually building it up. And with oil paints, this is because you're trying to build stability in your pigments and so things don't slide off of each other. It's easier to layer because you're not waiting for big, th thick, early layers of paint to dry. And so it just creates more stability. With pastels, you're following this principle in the sense of you don't want to fill up the tooth of your paper too quickly. Because if you fill in the tooth of your paper, you can't apply any more layers. You can apply workable fixative and things like that that can help, but it can't solve all of your problems if you fill in the tooth of the paper too quickly. And so I like to start with thin layers and I, so I start with inks and then I work with colored pencils and, and pan pastels and then I build up to my thicker, softer pastels like my Sennelier pastels or my Terry Ludwig pastels, which are just really thick and soft pastels that are great for layering and finishing off your piece. Um, so that's kind of how I work because I tend to get really heavy handed. And so if I start right off the bat with like a, a Sennelier or like a Schmika pastel, m the tooth of the paper gets filled up so quickly. And it's something I'm trying to work on and improve. Um, but with this piece in particular, this was my first pastel painting in seven, eight months um, because we I had worked on some before we moved, a few months before we moved, and then... We, I stopped painting and packed for our move and then we moved and we remodeled the house. And so this was a warm up piece to kind of get back into the pastel mindset um, before I started some commissions I had. And so as kind of like a safety net for myself, I built the layers up very slowly in this picture. So now I have my pastel pencils out and I am just building up the layers some more. And when you are working in something that's kind of abstract, like you have a lot of abstract shapes and highlights and shadows in the reflections of the ornaments, and you have kind of these weird shadow shapes um, in the bows of the tree and weird highlights from the light shining on it, it can get pretty overwhelming. And so what I like to do is just look at a small area and just look at the shape in the reference photo. So I'm not stressing about um, what that reflection actually is in the ball. I'm just looking at the shape of it. So if it's this kind of weird bean shaped thing, I will try to draw a weird bean shaped thing similar to it and use a similar value and then just build it up from there. 
I'm not saying like this is what an ornament looks like and this is what a generic ornament reflection looks like. I'm just looking at the reference photo, looking at the actual shapes of the reflections and the shadows and trying to copy that. It's so easy for our brains to start kind of filling in the gaps. It's like, oh, I've seen a reflection on a Christmas ornament before. Let's just draw this generic shape or let's, or if you're drawing a tree, without a reference photo to go on, it draws a generic tree. And those tend to end up looking a little bit more cartoonish and not as realistic. And that's why I'm a big proponent for having reference photos to work off of to improve your art because you need to look at your reference photo. And I spend a lot of time just staring at my reference photos, especially when I'm going realistic to try and see what needs to be adjusted. And you can see I'm starting to pull out the bigger, more traditional pastels in this piece, but the tooth of the paper isn't filled up a ton, so I can kind of go back and forth between my pastel pencils and my other more traditional pastels. And it's about this time when I added the purple that I was really feeling it, and I didn't want to be realistic or hyper-focused on this piece anymore. I just wanted to have fun and kind of be creative. And so you're going to see it start kind of uh, loosening up. There's going to be a lot more random colors thrown in. Uh, I go in these cycles of like wanting to be really realistic and like staring at details. And then there's other times where it's like, I just want to have fun. Just give the impression of it. When you're up close, you see like big broad strokes and then you take a step back and all of a sudden, all those random strokes form an image. And so that's kind of where I started leaning towards at this point in the picture and just building up more layers. And I'm starting to focus more on like the highlights and the shadows and build, and building up enough contrast that things kind of separate visually. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever had an issue with your paintings where or your drawings and you do something and you take a step back and it just looks really flat and it's all kind of blending in together and that's because you don't have enough contrast and so you can take a step back and kind of squint your eyes and look at the picture and that can give you an idea of what things need to be pushed darker and what things need to be pushed lighter. You can also take a photo of your painting and make it black and white and then that also gives you an idea of what needs to be tweaked and adjusted and if you find that you can't get your whites white and bright enough and you're using pure white and it's not standing out that means everything else needs to darken that's around it and then that will allow that white to pop so I'm just building it up and kind of looking at shadows taking a break taking a step back and kind of seeing and evaluating. So one of my favorite things about using pastels is the ability to course correct and change. Um, I've worked a lot in watercolor and watercolor is a very unforgiving medium. Um, I think that's why it stresses a lot of artists out and why artists that are really accomplished in oils or acrylics may try to steer clear of watercolor because it's hard to control and you don't have the ability to kind of cover up what mistakes you've made as easily as you would with acrylics. If you paint an area of an acrylic painting and you don't like how it turns out, you can just do a base coat over that area and start again and it doesn't really matter. But watercolors aren't forgiving like that. I found that pastels are a lot more forgiving. So on this piece, I decided I wanted it to be a little bit more whimsy and added more highlights to it and kind of tweaked it and built the layers. And I could do that without it getting as muddy or worrying about um, losing the white of the paper, which is something I would have had to worry about using um, traditional watercolors. So that's part of what I love, pastels. I also love how pastels, you can get really fine 
details, but you can also make it loose and, and kind of, I don't know. I just love pastels. So the tool I'm using right now is kind of a, it's called like a silicone scraper. Um, it's used a lot with like acrylic paints to help create texture. And I tend to use that. And then there's a red tool with a blue end called a rubber shaper. And I really, really like using those tools for blending when I'm not trying to create a super soft blend. I'm just trying to kind of smudge the colors around because they don't lift off the pigments at all. They kind of just spread it in a smooth way. And it creates a lot different of a texture than what a traditional paper blending stump or uh, like a sponge would create. I also love it for things like this where I sprinkled the pastel dust and kind of smudged it because it didn't lift it up and it didn't over blend it. It kind of just pushed it into the paper so it stayed put and then just gave it just a smudge to it. And so I just created this kind of whimsy, magical look to this painting, which I absolutely love. So here is the finished painting. And I hope you found this insightful and helpful. I hope you maybe learn something. I don't know. I felt like I was very rambly today. But if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you have anything you would like me to specifically talk about with pastels or to teach you, please leave a comment down below so I know kind of what content to create that would be most beneficial to you. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.